How did this man manage to completely ruin an entire football club in just 18 months? Chelsea were world champions just two years ago, but now they sit mid-table and show no signs of improvement. And there's only one person at fault for all that's gone wrong, from bad transfers to terrible coaching hires. Today, we will delve deep into every decision Todd Bowley's made that contributed to the complete downfall of Chelsea FC. January 2021. Thomas Tuchel is hired by Chelsea. No one knows what to expect. Chelsea are in 7th place and there is not a lot of optimism in this team. Yet just 5 months later, that same Chelsea team were lifting the Champions League trophy with Tuchel taking charge. By the next year, he was crowned world champion. He had taken this Chelsea team from nothing to the best team in the world. Only a truly world-class coach could do that. At the end of the 21-22 season, however, Roman Abramovich was forced to sell the club after 19 years in charge. He was one of the very few owners in club football that was actually a fan of the team he owned. He put winning over making money. So when he was forced to sell, it was going to change the entire dynamic at the top. He ended up selling to Clear Lake Capital and Todd Bowley was made chairman. Bowley's plan was simple, to build on what the club already had. His first sort of business was firing sporting director Marina Kranovskia. This was mistake number one. Marina might be someone who you're not familiar with. She stayed out of the public eye and has silently turned this team into winners. She was the woman that convinced Abramovich to keep Drogba long term, which directly helped them win the Champions League. She oversaw major transfers in the club from 2013, helping them win two Premier League titles and another Champions League. And she was an expert businesswoman, getting big money deals for guys like Hazard and Oscar, which worked perfectly in Chelsea's favour. Yes, she did make that questionable Lukaku transfer, but overall she's been a success. She knew Chelsea through and through, was labelled the most powerful woman in football. She even snagged best club director in 2021 at the Golden Boy Awards. Such an important figure was gone. And who did Todd Bowley replace her with? Himself. He became the new sporting director and was now going to oversee transfers for the next year. This was far from a good idea and raised the question of why he even got rid of Marina in the first place. It was clear from the jump that Bowley was way in over his head. In the 2022 summer window, Tuchel had a list of three players he wanted, Sterling, Rafinha and De Ligt. But Bowley could only get Sterling who City didn't want anyway. The other two directly rejected Chelsea for moves elsewhere. That season, Chelsea were desperate for defenders. Rudiger and Christensen both left, but they already failed to get the licked, Ake and Kempembe. So they went in for Kunde. But Tuchel wasn't convinced on him, yet Bowley spent weeks trying to pursue him and failed. It was clear Tuchel and Bowley weren't seeing eye to eye on these transfers, which was the most evident when Bowley dropped his pursuit of a defender in favour of spending two whole weeks failing to convince Ronaldo to join despite Tuchel and his entire coaching staff against that idea. They still spent £250 million that window. Koulibaly was a much needed centre back for an okay price and they brought in two youngsters in Chukwemeka and Kaseidi for £40 million combined. Which is a steep price for two teenagers but that's nowhere near the bad part. City and Chelsea were both interested in Kukurea but after City heard their asking price they backed out. Chelsea however ended up paying the full £60 million asking price for him on a 6 year contract too. Only God knows why they spent this much money on a guy who actually might be the world's most useless left back. Plus, with deadline day approaching and Chelsea still not having another centre back because Bowley spent so long trying to convince Ronaldo to join, they panicked and spent 75 million on Fafana, which was double their initial bid, as well as not replacing Lukaku, so they spent 10 million pounds on a 33 year old Bamiyang too. Overspending on players and spending way too long pursuing the wrong targets was a completely idiotic thing to do. There was no strategy to the signings, just a whole load of let me buy who I want from Bowley. Tuchel had a massive problem with this. He had a list of players he wanted and Bowley couldn't deliver and instead of coming up with a new plan Bowley took matters into his own hands and ignored everything Tuchel wanted which made no sense considering Tuchel knows infinitely more about football than Bowley and Tuchel is the guy who led them to being world champions. Thomas was more than fed up of whatever was going on at the top and with all the disagreements between the two Bowley sacked Tuchel four games into the new season. Mistake number two. Bowley said it was a lack of shared vision. We just weren't sure that Thomas saw it the same way we saw it. And no one's right or wrong, it's just we didn't have a shared vision for the future. The man who was named to replace Tuchel was Brighton manager Graham Potter, an understandable replacement, a young manager with Premier League experience who proved he can win games. Potter was supposed to be their long-term guy, signing a five-year deal with the club, which seemed a little risky because Graham Potter, while a great manager, managed Ostersund's FK in Sweden and Brighton in the Premier League. 
Managing Chelsea is a different ball game, a job where winning isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. For him to take over such a big club who spends tens of millions might be too bold. What raised eyebrows however was the fact they paid Brighton £21.5 million for Potter and his coaching staff. Plus the 5 year deal meant they were committing a lot of money for Potter making the risk of this appointment go up tenfold. To not many people's surprise, Potter struggled in his first few months. 5 wins in his first 17 league games was far from ideal and it was clear that this team weren't in a position to win anything this year. And in the January transfer window, as Chelsea slipped lower in the table, Bowley desperately wanted to try and turn this team around the only way he knew how, by spending loads of money. But this time, there was no Tuchel to stop him. Potter didn't have the same authority to tell Bowley who to buy, so the only thing Potter could do was sit back and watch as Bowley was about to destroy Chelsea Football Club as we know it. Bowley this time had a clear recruitment strategy. Buy as much young talent as you can and build for the future. Dacho Fofana, 10 million. Madueke, 30 million. Gusto, 27 million. Andre Santos, 18 million. Badia Shil, 35 million. All guys who were 20 or younger at the time of them signing for the club and they signed for a combined 100 million pounds. This strategy was an extremely bad idea. Spending so much on young inexperienced players in the hopes that they'll be good in the future is risky and considering Bowley wants to win now, buying a bunch of teenagers doesn't really seem like the best approach. That was the strategy he stuck with during this window and with no one to tell him to stop, it only got worse. You see, Bowley was willing to overspend on the transfers he wanted because his pulling power isn't strong. All the youngsters he already bought were not really worth the excess amount he paid for, which led Chelsea to their next massive problem. Man United and Barcelona faced the same issue at the height of their downfall, overspending. I went over it in detail in the two videos I made about them, so go check those out after this video. But once a team knows you're willing to overspend to get your target, they'll simply overcharge you for any player you're interested in. Barcelona had that with Dembele, Coutinho and Griezmann, and United had that with Pogba, Maguire, Sancho, Anthony. Chelsea did it overspending on Wesley Fofana and Kukurea and they ended up doing the same thing with Mudrik and Enzo. Mudrik was linked with Arsenal so heavily that he was basically on his hands and knees begging to move there. And obviously Bowley being the genius scout that he is, decided if Arsenal want him, he must be good. They spent 89 million, a price Arsenal weren't willing to pay and gave Mudrik an 8 year contract with a massive pay rise. And I don't need to tell you how that's worked out for Chelsea, do I? There's Enzo too. Chelsea were only willing to go as high as 75 million for the midfielder. A reasonable price, but Benfica were simply not having any of it. They demanded they pay his release clause or they miss out on him. This back and forth lasted the entire month, but on deadline day, Chelsea caved yet again and paid the 107 million pound release clause for him. 300 million pounds on eight signings that window, all under 21. To expect 50 new signings in one year, all from different countries, teams, and play styles to suddenly gel together overnight was was not only unrealistic, it was a sign of someone who doesn't know what the hell they're doing. They lacked the veteran presence in the team and selling Jorginho didn't help that. A team full of kids maybe wasn't the ideal route to go. They spent 600 million in one year with a negative half a billion net spend. So how on earth did they get around financial fair play rules? One word, amortization. To quickly summarize, when you buy a player, their transfer cost on the books is spread over the length of the contract buy a 100 million pound player on a 10 year deal and it technically counts as 10 million pounds per year but when you sell a player the entire cost is immediately accounted for in the books so Chelsea decided to sign their players to 7 or 8 year deals to spread the cost over as many years as they could. Bowley obviously thought this was a genius loophole and that he had outsmarted everybody in football but the risk of this is if the player sucks then you're stuck paying the wages for these guys for years. Mudrick signed an 8 year contract so if he turns out to be crap Chelsea are stuck with his wages and price tag for damn near a decade. Same with all the other players they signed, Fofana, Kukurea and all the youngsters they signed that haven't even seen the pitch once. It was a high risk tactic and it looks like that risk really isn't paying off right now. And after making all of those signings in January, they still sucked. From January 1st, they won just 4 league games for the rest of the season and finished a whopping 12th place after half a billion spent. The team wasn't good. It wasn't just a poor run of results, the attack was poor and with no elite number 9, goals were hard to come by. The players stopped playing like a team and no one in the dressing room was able to lift this team up and build that strong winning mentality again. And before Potter knew it, he was sacked just 7 months into his 5 year contract, a move that cost Boldy 13 million pounds. 
Truthfully, he didn't do a great job, but how much of this is his fault? Normally, Premier League squads consist of 22 players, 25 at the most. Chelsea had 36 first team players in their team. In fact, the team was so bloated that some players had to get changed outside of the dressing room. Team meetings had so many players that some had to sit on the floor. With such a big squad size, the training sessions had so many players, they ran side by side 11 v 11 games at the same time. Potter just didn't know his best 11 and was stuck trying to give so many players playing time. Over the 31 games he managed, he made 112 changes to his starting lineup, which was by far the most in the league. There was just a sense of Potter being stitched up to take over an impossible job. Bowley had taken them from world champions to bottom half because of stupid decisions while running the club. Lampard even came in towards the end of the season, won one game, lost six and then left. The season ended as Chelsea's worst in Premier League history. But now was time for a fresh start this season. Mauricio Pochettino was appointed as Chelsea manager in the summer, meaning he got a full window and pre-season to whip this team into shape. He knew from day one he came in to help this Chelsea team win. As he put it, my target is to win. My aim is to win. If you don't win in a club like Chelsea, you will struggle. This wasn't a rebuild. It was a win now scenario. You can't be bad for a few years after spending 600 million pounds. That's win now money. Football is about today or yesterday. We cannot talk long term. We cannot tell people we need six months. I think it is not good. That's the voice of a man who knows he has to deliver now. His first transfer window saw Chelsea make some decent moves in the transfer market, most notably their outgoings. They needed to cut squad size ASAP and ended up selling 14 players, generating £240 million in the process, including £25 million for Kovacic, £60 million for Mount, which is elite business by Chelsea to get that much for a guy with one year left on his contract, and somehow they convinced Arsenal to spend £65 million on Kai Havertz, which was a very good return on him. But any good they did was immediately wiped away as the signings they made were another example of overspending. £32 million on Nicholas Jackson, who actually has more yellow cards than goals. £52 million on Nkunku, who is a great signing when he plays, problem is he barely plays. Not to mention this team is in win now mode, right? Yet they signed five more teenagers this window for a hundred million pounds, none of who start by the way, as well as 40 million pounds on Axel Disaster, 40 million pounds on two goalkeepers Sanchez and Petrovic, and the cherry on top 115 million pounds on Moises Caicedo, a new record price tag. And I mean, I get it, right? Liverpool wanted him, there was a lot of interest and the guy is good. But to commit to another £100 million defensive mid is risky and if it doesn't pay off, you're once again going to look like complete idiots, especially after signing him to an 8 year deal. The only signing they made arguably over the past 2 years that have even been remotely worth the money was a shock move for Cole Palmer for £40 million. initially a high fee but the guy has been so on fire this season, £40 million is more than worth the money. Through this transfer window alone, they spent £400 million meaning their total spending under Bowley comes to over £1 billion in 13 months. You know what this means right? Chelsea kinda have to be good now, otherwise all this money is gonna look like a waste, I mean they don't have much wiggle room with financial fair play to sign many more players and the only way they can is by either making Champions League to increase revenue or sell more players which would be difficult considering most players in the squad have 5 or more years left remaining on their contract and they definitely ain't making profit on some of these ridiculously overpriced signings. Chelsea's expectation before the season was simple, 5th place. Not quite good enough for top 4 but good enough to bounce back from last season. Well that's far from the case. With players having nearly no incentive to play well, knowing their contracts have been sorted out for the next decade they've just been playing like crap. Literally this. There is no passion, there is no vision, there is no aggression, there is no f***ing mindset in this football club. They've massively struggled this season, currently sitting in and around mid-table just like last season. Unless they win a domestic cup, it will be another season of no European football for the Blues and you have to wonder, are these guys actually a mid-table team now? If they are, I mean there's only one person really to blame, it's Todd Bowley. There was simply just too much change from the second he took over. Chelsea is literally an entirely different team than two years ago. They have an entirely different board staff, medical staff, coaching staff, recruitment team, even the players too. To expect all of that change to lead to success makes no sense. Everyone who was responsible for making Chelsea European champions were gone. Even the staff Bodhi brought in, he got rid of. Potter was gone. 
Tom Glick, president of business, was gone after 10 months and their technical director was gone after 7 months. Abramovich was criticised for gutting managers quickly but he still had his trusted staff members. Bowley seems to want to get rid of everyone just months into their already pretty impossible job and the more this club becomes a revolving door, the harder it will be to build stability for them, leading to a mess in all departments which is what we're witnessing now. And now you have the Poch problem, does he stay for another year despite not reaching expectations of top 5 or does he get the benefit of the doubt? The flip side of all of this is, Chelsea are in rebuild mode, understand that they have a young team and don't expect them to win anything now, focus solely on getting young guys minutes and developing them so that 3-4 years from now they're ready to get back to winning ways. But are fans patient enough for that? Is the board patient enough for that? It seems like Chelsea don't actually have a plan. I don't think anyone knows whether Chelsea are rebuilding or trying to win now or what clear recruitment strategy they have. Everything from top to bottom is actually a mess and the harsh truth is no one should expect Chelsea to be good anytime soon barring some divine intervention. This team is simply too young to win now but their expectation is that there's too many questions surrounding Chelsea to the point of no one knows what's truly going on anymore. What do you think Chelsea should do next?